What's going on guys? Welcome to another edition of My Favorite Things. And in this episode, My Favorite Things is the crossover curl. Or you can say um, it's another version of a hammer curl. The only difference being that you're simply curling the weight across your body versus curling it straight up at your side. Um, for me personally, um, I really do enjoy this movement a lot better than a standard hammer curl. Not to say that this movement is superior than a standard hammer curl. It just happens that I find it works better for me and that I really do enjoy the movement a lot more. Um, you know, speaking of exercise selection, because that is, you know, a question that I get quite often, you know, what, what is the best exercise for this? What's the best exercise for that and you know for me personally the three kind of guidelines that I use when selecting my own exercise selection you know is one is the exercise safe for me to perform you know basically because I want to make sure that I'm preventing any types of injuries preventing aches and pains because the more I'm injured and the more I'm hurting obviously I'm not going to be able to progress that well so it doesn't make sense for me to do exercises that are going to bang me up. So rule number one, again, for me is to make sure that the exercise is as safe uh, for me to do. The second rule or second guideline that I go by is I think, okay, what exercise gives me the most bang for my buck? Meaning, you know, what exercise is the most effective um, in targeting, you know, the musculature and also is, you know, effective at, you know, increasing loads over time um, so I look at that and you know for me when it comes to you know a version of a hammer curl the crossover curl you know I found that I can load that exercise a lot better um, than I can with a standard hammer curl um, with a dumbbell at your side um, I think just basically you know being able to curl the weight across your body the weight is like more centered to your body um, and I think for me personally, that's why um, I'm able to kind of lift a bit heavier um, and safer with that movement. And then the third kind of guideline I use uh, as far as picking exercise is, is it fun? You know, do I enjoy doing it? Because uh, basically, you know, if I'm doing, you know, let's say the crossover curl was a movement I hated. Um, but even though, you know, you know, guideline number one and number two, um, we're on point you know if I'm not enjoying the movement I'm hating it chances are I'm not gonna want to keep doing it I'm probably gonna throw it out anyway so so having fun for me personally um, it's pretty important so anyways um, you know when it comes to the brachialis and the brachioradialis I think that's uh, some musculature there that um, we tend to overlook at times you know when we think arms we think biceps we think triceps um, so we think, okay, you know, barbell curls, we think skull crushers and things like that. Um, but sometimes, you know, we kind of neglect the, the other movements um, that can really just give more illusion and depth to your physique, especially as a bodybuilder when you're on stage. You know, if you're standing next to somebody who has, um, has fully developed arms, you know, biceps, triceps, brachialis, brachioradialis, they're probably going to stand out a bit more than someone who who may have been you know not incorporating um, certain movements to hit that musculature so it's pretty important that you know you really think about these these smaller details um, because when you're on stage there's a lot of different poses that the brachialis and the brachioradialis um, they impact those poses you know when we talk about the most muscular we talk about um, rear double bicep side chest side tricep hands on hip most muscular um, you know just to name a few you know there's a lot of poses that you know these smaller muscle groups muscle groups really bring an, another dimension uh, to those poses so it's pretty important that you know you make it a priority to kind of hit hit every you know part of your body uh, with the same intent um, so basically for me personally um, the crossover curl is usually like my finishing movement or my last movement when it comes to arm training and you know it's typically anywhere between two to three sets and the rep range 
Um, it's usually in the neighborhood of 8 to 12. Sometimes I'll go as high as 15 just depending on, um, you know, if, I'm, if I have any types of aches or pains or anything I'm dealing with. Um, but for the most part, you know, for me, I can keep really good form and good quality of training. Um, you know, two to three sets, six to 15 in that rep range. Um, and yeah, I usually do it about once, sometimes twice per week. Um, but hopefully um, this video helped somebody out there. And just keep in mind that these are my favorite things. Not necessarily telling you guys that my favorite things is the best way of doing something. It's just my experience over the years where um, it's the things that have really helped me the most um, along my journey. So always keep an open mind. Always remember that, you know, bodybuilding is not a black or white sport. Um, you know, there's a lot of shades of gray in between that you can utilize at any point in your journey to make you a better bodybuilder. So, so other than that, guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video um, and we'll talk to you guys later.